Hey there, my name is Natalia from nataliaray.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to connect your domain to WordPress so that you can use the domain that you already have and install a fresh WordPress website on it, right? So currently your current situation is probably one of the two. You either bought a single domain from a third party service like GoDaddy or Namechip or you maybe have a previous website that you've built on a different platform like Wix where you already bought the domain, you use the website and you want to move it into WordPress and you don't know what to do. So this training will show you exactly how to set up your domain on WordPress in only four steps. So the first step out of four in connecting a domain into WordPress is to actually get a hosting account. Hosting is kind of like the place on the web where your website lives and you need this kind of a hosting if you want to use a self-hosted WordPress website, which is the best alternative for you as a small and online business owner. Now, if you already have a hosting service, you can skip this step and move straight to step number two. If you don't have a hosting service, um, head over to nataliaray.com forward slash hosting and it's going to take you to the hosting service that I recommend 99% of my clients to use which is SiteGround, right? Because it's fast, it's reliable, it has great support and it's super, super affordable. And head over a little bit, scroll a little bit down and you have three different packages to choose from. Simply go for the smallest package because I like to start small and grow from there. I don't like to take many obligations when I first start a new business. And on the second step, uh, SiteGround are going to give you the option of use an already existing domain. By the way, every single hosting service that you're going to sign up for um, are going to give you that option. So even if you're not using SiteGround, but you're using something else like Bluehost or HostGator, um, you can do the same. Simply choose, I already have a domain. Type the domain that you already have in that box here and click proceed and simply sign up as any other regular user, right? On the next step, you're gonna go through checkout, fill in your details, your payment information, choose your package and click pay now. Once you're done with step one and have your hosting account, it's time for step two, which is changing your domain DNS. And let me explain exactly what that means. So basically a domain is kind of like your address on the web, right? And a domain cannot operate on its own. It has to be connected to some sort of a hosting service. In this case, I gave you the example of SiteGround, right? Now the way that we do that is each and every single domain has some kind of a settings called domain name servers, DNS. And this is the thing that basically connects the domain to a hosting service. So what you're going to do is first, you're going to need to um, understand what is the DNS of the hosting servers that you use. For SiteGround, the way that you're going to do that is you're going to head over into the tab called Websites and click on the orange button here that says cPanel, right? Um, once you're gonna click on the button, the cPanel will open. This is the control panel, the back end of your hosting account. And you're going to look for this section here that says name servers. You're going to have two different lines. They're usually going to be exactly identical except one or two numbers. This is usually how it's going to go. So save those uh, lines, keep that tab open. And then what you're going to do is you're going to head over into your domain provider, the place where you bought your domain and enter the settings of your domain there. I'm going to give you an example from GoDaddy because I have a few domains there. And my website, nataliaray.com is actually um, registered at GoDaddy. And there you're going to have an option of DNS settings. Um, it might actually look something like this where you have three dots and you can click on manage DNS. But no matter the, the domain provider that you use, whether it's Namechip, again, GoDaddy, uh, 101 or anything else, you will always have the option of manage DNS. Search for it, click on it, and then you're going to come into a place where you will be able to change the DNS of your domain. I'm gonna wait for it to load up. And once it did, you're gonna see a section name, named name servers. You're gonna hit the button to change them. And once you do, an edit screen will open up and you will be able to take the name service from here 
and copy them into here. Always copy the first line into the first line, the second line into the second line. Do that and hit save. I'm not gonna do that right now because my name servers are already uh, set up, but you're gonna do that and click save. Once you did that, you're done with step two. Now it's time for step three. And step three is usually the longest and the one that takes the most patience because this is where um, you have to wait until the domain name service, the DNS of your domain will be updated, which can take anywhere between 24 hours to 72 hours, right? And it really, really is um, it depending on so many different variables. So. You're just going to have to wait and be patient a little bit. Now, the way to know whether or not your DNS has been updated is you're going to go to a website called whatsmydns.net. And in this website, you're going to click your, uh, you're going to fill up your domain in this little field here and choose the option of NS, which basically means name servers, right? Once you do that, you're going to hit search. And once your DNS is already updated, you're gonna see the new name servers pop up here with the little green tick, right? If your name servers have not been updated yet, you're either gonna see um, a different line show up, usually your previous host, or if you don't have a domain, something uh, defaulty, and you have many, many Xs. Once everything is green checked and all the DNSs are the same, it means this step is done. And now that we have finished with step number three, it's time to the very last step where we're going to add on the domain into our C panel, into our control panel, where we can actually start playing around with it and install WordPress on it, right? So once you've waited for all of your green checks to appear, you basically go back to your C panel and you head over to a section um, called domains and a click on a button that's called add on domains. Click on that button and the only thing that's left for you to do here is to fill out those fields and you're done. So basically what you're going to do is first you're going to uh, in the first line fill in your actual domain address. For me it's nataliaray.com. The second line will be filled automatically for you and the third line of the document root will also be filled for you. Now, if your domain is particularly long, um, you might not see the entire domain here. You might, it might look something like this. Know that it doesn't matter. Um, this field, the only thing that it means is how your website folder will be named inside the hosting service provider. It's super, super back end. It makes absolutely no difference in how your actual website will look or be named online, right? So whatever you can fill up here, just fill it out. It doesn't really matter. And the last step for you to do is to actually choose a password. I like to click this button here that says password generator. I'm copying this password here, one, two, and I'm going to click add domain. I'm not gonna do that now because I've already done so for this particular domain, but once you do, you're gonna see your domain listed here in the list of domains. If you don't have many domains as I do, you will only see one obviously, right? And now basically you're done. The only thing left for you to really do Next is to install WordPress, which I have a whole video about on this channel, which I'm going to link in the description, but that's it. That's how you connect your domain to your WordPress. And I hope you had a good time with me on this video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so below because I have a ton of training coming up for small and online business owners, just like you who are on the journey to create their own laptop lifestyle. I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, yeah, bye.